Hi everyone, in this lecture we will look at the difference between a microprocessor and a microcontroller. A microprocessor basically reads the data, does extensive calculation and then stores back this data while a microcontroller will read does limited calculation and finally control using the limited calculation that has done or maybe it will store back the data. So that is the basic difference between a microprocessor and a microcontroller. We will see in much more detail what is the differences. So we are talking about a microprocessor. So in the previous slide I talked about having to read doing extensive processing or extensive calculation as well as storing of data. So when I am talking about reading data, the data will be massive okay, or bigger data, the size of the data will be bigger. So in this case of microprocessor, the ROM and RAM requirements are comparatively bigger okay, to store this kind of data or to store or to handle this kind of data not only store as well as to handle this kind of data the kind of rom and ram required will be bigger so when i'm talking about rom and ram it is basically floppy disks right you have hard disks pen drive right so these are the some of the data storage devices that is used with respect to a cpu for storing or handling of the data while the data needs to be inputted we use something like keyboard or mouse and for outputting we use our screens that is our monitor or maybe a projector so as you can see the data that is being handled by a cpu is comparatively bigger or larger right so the data that is handled is bigger now after this data is there maybe we need to do some kind of controlling and for that again you require some peripherals that need to be attached to the cpu for this controlling part of it right now here when you are talking about a rom and a ram the program or the instruction so when i am talking about program it is basically to tell the cpu to what to do right so the set of instructions so program is nothing but a set of instructions so here the set of instructions or the program is dynamic so let us take a very simple example so take an example of your desktop machine i am running a simple word processor so after some time i want to listen to a music video right so what happens when we want to run a word processor so the application is in the rom it comes to the ram and finally it is processed by the cpu now after some time if i want to listen to a music what will happen the music application also goes from to the rom and from the ram and the word processor is removed from the cpu and your cpu will take care of the audio application so here you can see the cpu has dynamic program or the set of instruction that is running on the cpu is different every time or it is called as dynamic right so that is what is a cpu now cpus are used in standalone or small systems like atvm machines or where you get tickets right so automatic ticket vending machines to your desktop to your big servers or server farms we call it as server farms so server farms is like google gmail where your data is stored on the cloud so here if you look at atvm it's a very small application it only vends your ticket it goes on and depending upon the card or the money that you put in it will vend your ticket so it's a very small application the second one is a desktop desktop is a comparatively complex application and server farms are bigger and very very complex application so cpu are very very flexible that can be used from an atvm machine to a server farm now let us look at a microcontroller so again what does the microcontroller do it will read it will do limited calculation and finally it will control using this limited calculation or maybe also it can store the data but generally it will control using this limited amount of data now when in this case the rom and ram required is comparatively smaller why because your microcontrollers are used in systems or application where the program is generally fixed so i will take an example of a microwave oven so if you look at a microwave oven what you will see is that 
when the microwave oven the program that is there so what do we use a microwave oven for to cook food right so the algorithm or the instructions for the microwave oven does not change over time or its lifetime right so it does not change so the program remains fixed so set of instructions also always remains fixed so the ram and the rom requirement is comparatively smaller with respect to a micro processor right so here the program are more static instead of dynamic here it is more static so the io port requirements is also very very fixed and very very simple the peripherals required are specific to that application so now if you see in the microcontroller all these are very very tightly together so it is comparatively faster little bit faster right so the processing here we have read limited calculation as well as control so that is the difference between a microprocessor and a microcontroller now the brain of both of them is nothing but your cpu that is the central processing unit let us look at how a central processing unit works so let us take an example i want to add two numbers x plus y right so how do you cpu operate now this instruction of adding so i have an instruction let us say i'll do an instruction say add x plus y instruction i'll be given to the cpu so this instruction will be picked up and put on to this data bus okay now this x and y has to be stored it can be stored in this general purpose registers right general purpose registers are based on ram okay because it is temporary it is used for temporary storage right so here what will happen is x and y will be stored in this temporary general purpose register memory or a simple memory now the moment this instruction is passed the instruction decoder will see that okay the programmer has given an instruction say add right add x plus y so what it will do is it will transfer this two data into the arithmetic logic unit it will add this two data and it will store back this data into some other memory into the same memory or it can even go to this external memory right so this instruction decoder will instruction is decoded the data is added and it is stored back this is also taken care of by this control unit so this process of taking reading this instruction to the instruction decoder giving it to the arithmetic unit is done by the control unit and it is made up of one particular register called as the program counter which we will see in the further lectures in the control unit right so this is a very basic inside look to the cpu when we will be looking at the instruction we will look at more detail in a microcontroller cpu memory what is a memory required for memory is required for two purposes for storing the program what is a program it's nothing but a set of instructions and then data right so these are two kind of requirement for the memory so we have read only memory and random access memory so where is read only memory used read only memory is used for permanent or static kind of data or unchangeable data the random access memory is used for temporary or volatile okay or changeable data right so this is comparatively as you can see one is read only memory and the other is random access memory here it is the data retention or data storage data retention is not dependent on power not dependent okay so if i switch off the power the data will not go here data retention is dependent upon the power right so if i switch off the power the data in the ram will be lost while in the rom will not be lost so what are all the technologies that are there for the rom so here rom we have something called as uve prom ultraviolet erasable prom the second one is electrically erasable prom and the third one is flash so these are the major technologies that are used for rom the second one is ram that is static ram sram 
which is used in microcontrollers and DRAM which is used in microprocessors. So read only memory is generally used to store your programs which generally never changes okay or some static data static data let us say you have a signboard so as we move on the road we can see a lot of static signboards that are there which does not change much so these are all stored in the read only memory ram where temporary kind of data is stored so temporary kind of data is stored right so this is what the types of memory are there right so there is never called as something called as a program memory and a data memory as you can see read only memory can be used for storing program as well as data while ram also can be used for storing dynamic set of instructions in the case of microprocessors okay or the simple temporary data so what are all the microcontroller application so if you see all the application in your daily life if you see this most of them most of the things are there so consumer electronics you will see a couple of uh, 10 to microwave oven fridge and an ac industries industry then your car your car has up to more than 60 65 microprocessors and microcontroller then you have the mobile phones aviation industries right biomedical electronics internet devices and you must heard about the term called as internet of things so it will have a microcontroller inside it so as you can see it encompasses your life a typical Indian home will have more than 50 to 60 microcontrollers, 50 to 60 microcontrollers in their home, right, at the present time. So, with this, we will stop this topic about the difference between microprocessor and microcontroller. Happy learning. Thank you.